Kentucky. And so we welcome Vince to read for us Luke's account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. From Luke 19, 29 through 40. When Jesus came near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. Mm -hmm. We have some more, Kendra? <laughs> so those who were sent dispatched and found it as it had told them as they were untying the coat the owners asked them why are you untying the coat and they said the lord needs it then they brought it to jesus and after throwing their cloaks out on the on the coat they sat jesus on it as he rode along, people kept spreading their clothes on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitudes of his disciples began to praise God joyfully with loud voices for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Bless us, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if those were silent, the stones would shout out. I Thanks to Vince uh, for that wonderful reading of God's holy word. And so let us be together in a spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All throughout this Lenten season, we've heard stories and reflections from members and friends of our family of faith about their experiences of grief and goodness intertwined. And so today I pause to share some of my own experiences of grief and goodness. And there are many, many stories I could share, stories of grief and goodness amid loss in my own life, the loss of loved ones, lost jobs, lost certainty. There are many, many stories I could share of grief and goodness experienced while journeying with congregants through all life's ups and downs. But today, I want to share what has been on my heart most recently, the grief and goodness of these last many months. Months ago, sometime in December, I think, as I was planning ahead for worship in this Lenten season, and yes, pastors sometimes plan for Lent in December. <laughs> At that time, grief and goodness were so palpable to me. November and December were, of course, those months when cases of COVID-19 were surging dramatically, followed by the even more heartbreaking surge in deaths due to the pandemic. And in the midst of it, everyone was forced to give up or dramatically adapt cherished holiday traditions. I, like so many, were feeling the losses keenly but I was at the same time deeply moved and touched by the ways people were embracing and lifting up hope in the midst of it all. For my part, 
I remember being moved to tears several times as videos for the Christmas pageant and for Christmas Eve worship kept rolling in. I watched many of them several times as tears streaked down my face. Tears of gratitude for all of you. Tears celebrating the good and faithful way in which everyone was offering their gifts and talents to make the season sacred for all. I remember feeling deep sorrow and deep joy and realizing that the sacred story of Jesus coming into the world was taking on new depths of meaning in my spirit. Looking forward to those, looking forward from those days, knowing we would mark one year of pandemic wilderness during Lent, I had this deep sense and this feeling of grief and goodness intertwined, and I knew that feeling would only grow and thus would best be acknowledged and considered with faithful intentionality. And thus our Lenten theme was born. Little did I know how poignant it would be to carry the lens of grief and goodness intertwined throughout this season. I never expected to see grief and goodness so vividly intertwined one Sunday morning when I looked over at the amaryllis flower in our window and there was a blossom bursting while right next to it on the very next shoot, that first blossom was already withering away. And I never expected to be filled so completely with a sense of grief and gratitude watching my son and his kindergarten classmates wrestle on masks each morning, decked head to toe in winter gear, eager to enter their school for another day of learning where they would be met by hand sanitizer and plexiglass and strict rules to keep everyone safe. And I never expected the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines to tug my heartstrings in so many directions at once. I overflow with gratitude and awe for the goodness of these vaccines developed safely in only a matter of months and finally bringing a tangible sense that this pandemic will one day be past rather than ever present. Yet, in the same breath, grief wells up within me as I contemplate what's next. There are specific griefs, some exceptionally trivial, like knowing that my days of wearing only jeans and sweatpants are coming to an end. And then there are the things that are far more serious like the grief of knowing that the carefully crafted balance and rhythm of daily life that took months to find will soon be thrown into transition once more. Or the grief of the growing sense that when we can gather again, the loss of those who have died this year will be visible and tangible in heartbreakingly empty chairs. Change is coming, and that is good, and it brings grief, grief and goodness intertwined. It all has me considering Jesus' entry into Jerusalem anew. Jesus riding the colts awkwardly into town is a visible, tangible sign that change is coming, change that will bring grief and goodness, the grief of betrayal, denial, suffering, and death, and the goodness of new life and resurrection. Jesus knows it, the crowd knows it. They throw their cloaks on the road before Jesus. They shout out in praise. 
but some don't like it. Some of the strict followers of religious law who are present say to Jesus, order your followers to stop. Tell them to pipe down. But Jesus is having none of it and simply responds, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. It's Jesus' way of saying, change is coming, like it or not, but it's coming. It is time. The time is now to leave behind all that is death dealing and embrace the new life Jesus brings. And yes, it's making waves. Yes, it's loud and messy. Yes, there will be demonstrations in the street. Yes, it's hard. Yes. It makes us uncomfortable. Yes, there will be loss. There will be grief. But today, calmly and humbly, riding his awkward steed peacefully, yet powerfully into town, Jesus reminds us, I am with you. I am here to go before you in grief and lead you through to the goodness, to the new life, to the wholeness, to the fullness of life God has always intended. Friends, beloved people of God, today we affirm that change is coming. Change is coming as vaccines roll out. Change is coming as the earth softens after the long cold winter. Change is coming as Jesus leads the way into this week of holy remembrance. Change is coming and that is good and that brings grief. Grief and goodness intertwined. So now our calling is to follow humbly, to shout our praises, to claim goodness with the crowd, with the stones, and to trust that Jesus will lead us through the grief, all grief, to the discovery of even greater goodness to come. May God's spirit of peace, hope, grace, and courage attend us all along the way. Amen.